The feud between the Democrats and their supporters has got worse as Israel launched its Rafah offensive. As President Biden has become increasingly critical of Israel, some of his campaign's biggest pro-Israel donors are becoming more critical of him. Democratic mega-donor and Israeli-American Haim Saban criticized Biden's recent move to pause bomb shipments to Israel. Let's not forget that there are more Jewish voters who care about Israel than Muslim voters that care about Hamas. The public feud highlights the divisions within the Democratic Party that have erupted since October 7th. Biden's initial embrace of Israel prompted some of his supporters to protest against him around the country. At the same time, many pro-Israel donors rallied around Biden's re-election and helped him build his current financial advantage over former President Trump. Biden has become more critical of Israel Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu's conduct of the war. And in response, some donors and influential pro-Israel voices have grown more critical of the president. Mark Melman, the president and CEO of the influential group Democratic Majority for Israel, said, there are a lot of people in the pro-Israel community who are very worried, very upset, and very angry. We don't know what the consequences are going to be politically. Chinese Premier Xi Jinping traveled to Europe for the first time since 2019 this week, where he visited Paris, Budapest, and Belgrade. For all the pomp and ceremony during his trip to Paris, it was the stops in Budapest and Belgrade that carry the greater geopolitical significance for the future. Xi's visit to Europe was to lay down a marker on Europe's future alignment. China sees both Hungary and Serbia as key entry points for China's Belt and Road Initiative into Europe. There is little France, Germany, or the UK can do currently as the continent is caught between great power competition. Xi's trip to Europe comes nearly a year after the European Union formally launched its de-risking campaign against China as part of the bloc's economic security strategy, which aims to reduce the European Union's economic vulnerabilities and critical dependencies on adversarial countries. Xi's visit attempted to preserve economic and trade relations with the European Union by exploiting underlying political and economic divisions among individual EU member states. China's strategy targeted economic coercion and co-option to exploit divisions within the bloc and prevent it from adopting economic restrictions against China. Making future military aid to Ukraine contingent on the country participating in peace talks with Russia. Banning Chinese nationals from buying property within a 50-mile radius of U.S. government buildings. Filling the national security sector with acolytes of Donald Trump. These are just some of the policies from the America First Policy Institute in its new book, An America First Approach to U.S. National Security. Fred Flights, the book's editor and retired Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg, served as Trump's acting national security advisors and wrote several of the chapters. Both cast the current trajectory of U.S. national security as a failure, thanks to a foreign policy establishment it accuses of having embraced an interventionist and globalist approach at the expense of America's national interests. Regarding China, the authors say, an America first. China policy builds on those efforts to defeat China's malign influences, striving to make CCP policies largely irrelevant to American life. On Ukraine, there is a pathway forward in which America can keep its own interests prioritized while also playing a role in bringing the largest war in Europe since World War II to an end. The authors believe the U.S. should make future military aid contingent on Ukraine participating in peace talks with Russia. Now Trump just needs to win all his court cases and defeat the incumbent president if he wants to enact these policies.